everyone, I'm Chris Hernandez and this is the Weekly Report, a look at your news from the city of Kansas City, Missouri. A new CNG powered street sweeper made its debut this week at the Marlboro Neighborhood Clean Sweep event. During this event, residents brought trash, brush and tires for disposal. Kansas City's new mobile 311 van was also on hand to serve residents. So this morning we've got a clean sweep event. We've got uh, multiple departments out here working with our neighborhoods in collaboration to try to make this a transformational neighborhood, to try to clean up a neighborhood, to make it safe and, and have significant change in the neighborhood. But we've got our 311 van out here and the highlight of the event is our Kansas City Royal Street Sweeper. The new street sweeper has a Royals theme. It's the city's first and only sweeper to display both the Royals logo and the city's Casey moniker with the theme, they sweep teams, we sweep streets. The street sweeper runs on compressed natural gas, which is more fuel efficient and environmentally friendly than diesel equipment. Each year, Kansas City street sweepers cover more than 16,000 gutter miles. That is equivalent to three round trip drives from New York to Los Angeles. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. The thing about Tech Week that's really nice is you get to find people who are just like us, who don't have any grounding, and then you have other people who have taken their product and elevated it. And a lot of people like to share their stories. And a lot of people are giving me their card, told me that I can contact them after the fact. You know, it's, it's something that you kind of can't get offline. Like, you can Google anything, but you can't really Google experience that somebody else has had. And that's really awesome. Uh, I've never heard about it before. This is my first time in the States. Um, my knowledge about the States was, uh, and in particular about the startup scene was, you know, Silicon Valley, maybe New York. Kansas City does have an amazing amount of talent here um, and support for people to come from the coast here. It's getting together, brilliant minds, supporting each other, and letting the nation know that we are uh, a tech force to be reckoned with here in Kansas City. You don't know what's around the next bend in the river. You know, it's like this on the river. You got slow water, you got fast water. That's always changing, you know. Meet Chad Progrecki, a young man with boundless energy that flows from him like the Mississippi River itself. I kind of grew up as a river kid. I used to go out fishing, a lot of scavenging on the islands, just picking up driftwood, things like that. And uh, about the age of 15, I started uh, working with my brother on a shell boat. I also did some commercial fishing, worked on a barge. So in one way or another, always been tied to the river. I noticed how much garbage was out there, and I didn't see anybody going on to go out there and pick it up. While in college, Chad came up with an idea he hoped would do some good and inspire others to act. The Mississippi River Beautification and Restoration Project. The idea was simple. The task monumental. Clean both banks of the Mississippi River for 435 miles from Gutenberg, Iowa to St. Louis, Missouri. This refrigerator washed up against a beaver dam is no match for Chad's determination. It's an adventure. I mean, you never know what you're going to pull out. And this day on the river has just begun. That is sick. It's like a landfill, doesn't it? Looks like somebody missed the turn. In under three years of operation on the river, an abbreviated list of Chad's haul includes 1,598 bags of trash, 2,197 tires, 126 refrigerators, 27 bed springs, one 1970 full-size van, 51 TVs. And enough styrofoam to fill a football field a foot thick, and that's a low estimate too. 
But there's more to keeping this project afloat than most people see. Working the phones takes more out of me than actual physical work. Money turns the props. That's, that's how to say it, you know? Without the sponsors, I, I can't go out there and do it. I mean, it takes a lot, a lot of money to keep it going. I try to take the word discourage out of my vocabulary, put persistence in there, but sometimes it is hard because you get so many no's and I'll do whatever it takes to get the job done. Then it's back out on the water. With his eyes on the river, Chad sees things other than trash on the Mississippi and its tributaries that concern him. That's a perfect example. That slough probably about less than 10 years ago was a good running slough with probably maybe clams in it, you know, lots of fish. And now it's not even probably six inches deep. Dirt is the bread and butter of America. Here we are just washing away, you know? It kind of irks me and I'm gonna hope to fight that someday too. For today's fight, Chad enlists help to retrieve a large tank. Even though this project often looks like a one-man show, he insists it's the hard work and dedication of many that feed the program's success. Teamwork gets, gets the job done, meaning all my sponsors, my crew, everything. Get out from underneath it. All right, that's it. You got it. I enjoy it. I enjoy the work. I, I, I believe in it. It's time for something positive to happen. And, uh, and this is the gig. That's the one. All right. Operation Big Mystery Barrel thing. Done. Well, almost. I'll hold it. <laughs> the job's not over till they recycle what they can. Tires will go to a shredder or an incinerator, one of the two. Um, and then the metal and the aluminum will go to the scrap yards. Like a propane tank, I'll take back to the propane place. And I don't need any money for it. You know, I'm just happy if they'll take it off my hands. For those who may doubt the sincerity of their recycle and reuse philosophy, make note of the houseboat they work out of. It was sunk on the bottom for, like, I don't know, a day or two. I was headed for a landfill. These guys didn't come to pick it up. They're going to crush it and throw it away. So that was a recycled boat. And that's pretty nice to say, you know, we're living on a recycled boat. It's called the Miracle. That's what, that was the name of it. It's a miracle. This man lives what he believes. And what's more, he believes in others. Uh, people can definitely make a difference for sure. It might not be picking up garbage. It might be just trying to fix up, you know, like your shore front, or maybe you live in a stream way up and you just want to fix up the stream bank. It all adds to it and it all helps, that's for sure. The Mississippi River Beautification and Restoration Project has pulled over 200 tons of trash, materials, and waste from these waters. And Chad will continue his river crusade making the rivers he loves a better place for all of us. It is like an adventure. It's a tough adventure, but it's a good adventure, that's for sure. Everything you do helps, no matter how small. The 2015 18th and Vine Jazz and Blues Festival takes the stage October 10th. Gates open at 1 p.m. This year's festival features headliners The Family Stone and Papa Chubby. For a complete list of performers and ticket information, visit festival.americanjazzmuseum.org. A new 800-room downtown convention hotel is on the way. City manager Troy Schulte and developer Mike Burke recently signed the contract that will move the project forward. The hotel will be built on the block between Truman Road and 16th Street between Wyandotte and Baltimore. It's right across from the southern end of the Kansas City Convention Center. Uh, I think it does exactly what we want it to do, which is to move the city forward, add some new hotel stock, add some additional rooms, uh, open up the doors to the city to anybody who wants to come here for a meeting, uh, for vacation for conventions, for business purposes, whatever, because now we have uh, more stock, more assets to show off to them and to put them up uh, right adjacent to the Kaufman Center for Performing Arts and the Convention Center. Ideal location, great key, um, and a very good project, and one that really protects the city, and I want to thank Mike Burke for that. Well, the city has to, what we have to do is continue to uh, prime the market. Uh, you've started to see that with the 
uh, investments, the announcement the CVA has already made, Visit Casey's already made about new downtown activity. In order to add this amount of hotel room space and not hurt other hoteliers, uh, which is the objective of the city, we've got to be very aggressive in marketing the city. And so we are asking Visit KC to step up. So far they've responded, but we're going to, from a city perspective, continue to push that effort of making sure that when this thing opens in mid-2018 that it's uh, full meeting its occupancy standards and not just redirecting existing traffic. So we've got a lot of work to do to just make sure that that rising tide lifts all boats. So that's where we're going from here on, we'll, but we've got more work to do. The new hotel is already attracting new conventions to town. Four new conventions have already been booked this year, including the Shriners 2020 convention that is expected to bring $18 million to our local economy. The Shriners leader says the new hotel and the new streetcar made a big impact on their decision to bring their convention to Kansas City. Shriners come to town, we have a good time. It's all about having fun and helping kids. So we're very excited to be here, but. While we're doing our business and doing our things, our ladies love to spend our money. So they will be out shopping, touring the city, and when nightlight comes, then everybody's off duty, and all the Shriners and their ladies, we intend to take over the Power and Light District during that time. It's gonna be Shriners Power and Light time for us then, because we are known to have a good time. The city's obligation to the project is $35 million, which will be paid by the existing convention and tourism tax, so no new taxes will be levied. And there's also no risk to the general fund. The property's performance risk is backed by the developer, not the city. The city will hold its annual fire drill sometime between 9 a.m. and noon on Friday, October 2nd. The city's 311 call center, which is located inside City Hall, will be closed for a brief period during that drill and it will reopen no later than 1 p.m. Residents may of course still contact 311 online at kcmo.gov 311 or by using the 311 mobile app. Intersections around City Hall may be closed for a brief period sometime between 9 a.m. and noon. The fire department will participate in the training exercise and police will be on hand to direct traffic to make this drill as realistic as possible. Total closure time at these intersections should be less than one hour. The city appreciates the public's patience during this very important safety exercise. To view this program again or other Channel 2 videos, go to kcmo.gov and search Channel 2. This page has a link to our YouTube channel and a Channel 2 program guide. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.